Hi, everyone. Um, I also had a very brief uh, case presentation to share with you all. This is also from the New Orleans project that Vicki and I had worked on this past year. And um, what I really liked about this client is that I feel like he's very resilient. Um, there's a lot of things going on in his life, and for him, there are a lot of them um, surrounded some interpersonal issues. Also, he had some chronic pain, had gotten into an accident um, a little bit over a year ago that really changed his perspective on life, and um, that's sort of when his depression you know, became heightened. So I just wanted to share a little bit um, about him with you. So he's an African-American male, age 48. Um, he doesn't have any close family members living um, in the area, but he's been living in New Orleans all his life. Um, he's low uh, social economic status and is on disability. And the presenting problem was depression, but the clinician that was working with him directly thought that maybe some of that, a lot of that actually was due to the chronic pain he was experiencing from his car accident. So he got into a car accident a little bit over a year ago, and so he was unable to keep working at his old job um, where he was a chef um, at a local restaurant. He had a girlfriend, and his girlfriend um, had a daughter, so he was, you know, there was a lot of uh, a f sense of loss of roles in his life. So um, he, you know, had a girlfriend, he had a job, you know, he was a father to um, the girlfriend's daughter, and then everything kind of happened all at once. So he had the accident, then him and his girlfriend started not doing so well, and they broke up, and so all these things started unraveling. Um, so a lot of it um, also was that he had an impending court date where he might be getting some compensation for the accident. So another um, obstacle that we had was thinking about whether or not he had motivation to really show that he was getting well because there's this court um, date coming up and he, there's a sense of maybe him wanting compensation for his losses. So um, for him, um, he had a psychiatrist and he's been on meds for a little while but um, he just didn't really have the tools um, to really, you know, know the skills that he can use on his own. Like he couldn't really, you know, you know, use some skills at, when he's at home to like try to deal with some of these things. And so he would come to session and he had been seeing this clinician for about four months before we started the CBT program. And so he'd feel really great coming to therapy. He felt really great for maybe another hour or two. And then the next week it's almost like starting all over again. Like they never broke any ground. So he started the CBT program. He's actually on his last session of the third module, so he's been in it for a little bit over three months. They took a little bit longer with him on a couple of the sessions. It's a 12-week program, but um, they took you know a couple of extra weeks in the beginning um, with the thoughts module because that can be difficult. So for him, um, his strengths were that he's really intelligent, he's very verbal, very contemplative, and he had a great attitude about learning this new um, new form of, of treatment of CBT. Um, some of the weaknesses that he had was that he had he needed a lot of assistance to follow through. The pain sometimes was so great in session. Um, we would listen to these audio tapes and you could hear him groaning and moaning like it was just so unbearable for him just to be sitting in the session. Um, and he focused on the negatives a lot. So that came through a lot in his thoughts is that you know everything was negative when he was looking at his mood throughout the week. When he went through the mood chart where he had to decide um, what mood he was at for um, a single day, he'd always go to the very low point and circle that. And it took a little while for the clinician to figure out that that's what he was doing, that he wasn't really thinking about the whole of his day or identifying some of the high points. So that's something that we addressed. Um, doing the activities was a big obstacle also because he um, a lot of it had was connected to his pain again. So. Um, there were times when he had planned an activity to do and he would come back and say, well, I couldn't do it because I was in pain. I couldn't go for a walk or different things like that. So a lot of it was also meeting him where he was at and realizing that even a small pleasant activity like, you know, setting some time to read a book, you know, something that doesn't involve physical activity per se, but just something that you're scheduling, that you're following through on can make a big difference in someone's mood. The biggest issue we've been working on is the role loss, as I mentioned earlier. So he's starting to feel like he doesn't have very much to give. He doesn't have a job right now. Um, he doesn't really remember what it was like when you know he was a father and he was a boyfriend and just had all these things in his life. So a lot of what we're working on with him right now 
in the interpersonal module is to get him reconnected to the people in his life before his accident and to try to show him that he can still take on these roles and maybe they're altered now that he's had the accident and there's some, you know, impede, um, you know some things that are impeding his physical movement and, you know, being as active as he used to be, but showing him that he can still take on these roles and rebuild them and maybe they would just be slightly different. So the treatment focus has really been trying to empower him with these tools. Um, a lot of uh, getting him to follow through more on his own has been troubleshooting uh, the activities before they happen. So once something's assigned to him or he says, I'm going to do an activity, um, we now walk him through step by step. You know, what happens then if you start feeling pain? What happens if you get busy? What happens if you're really depressed that day? And so they come up with a, um, several scenarios and just make sure that they're all addressed, that they're walked through, and he's been a lot better on his follow through. Um, providing meaning in his life, again, the role loss um, has been huge, and that's been a target of treatment as well. Um, he's very close to termination. We're about a couple of weeks out. So again, the follow-through is big, so we're doing a step-by-step -step crisis management plan with him, um, troubleshooting any obstacles that might come up. And he, one of his greatest strengths is that he's really verbal. So he has you know, some physical limitations right now, but he's really smart, catches on really quickly. So a lot of it now, now that he's becoming more and more advanced in his CBT, is letting him know that these skills are allowing him to be his own therapist when he's at home and when treatment is terminated. And having him um, give feedback about what he's been getting from treatment and reviewing all the steps and all the skills that he's learned has also really helped him internalize it. So this is um, a case in progress, but we feel really good about it. He's starting to reconnect with some of his old coworkers and trying to rebuild some of the social spheres of his life. So that's, um, that's the case that I'm working on now.